Do you know where people go to snorkel? Obviously, obviously the ocean, <laughs> ocean bodies of water. Uh, nobody goes snorkeling in the really, really, really deep part. Very rarely, mm -hmm. unless you're intending to swim with whales and stuff. But if you really want to have fun snorkeling, you go to the shallows. It's so cool. That's where mm -hmm. all the cool stuff is, where you can watch the colorful <gasps> fish see turtles frolicking, uh, there's a lot more safety, there's more people, you can usually touch the bottom. That is where a lot of life is so found. Mm -hmm. Yep. So today we are talking about play mm -hmm. and the importance of play in your marriage. Mm -hmm. So I am Elisa and Brian Hope and with a whole lot of years as a mental health therapist. And a lot of years as a pastor and even more years being married. We've got hopes for your marriage. Here we go. Here we go. All right, now, I bring up the ocean and the snorkeling because... <laughs> he likes to talk about I it I do, lot. very much. <laughs> uh, it, because it reminds us mm -hmm. that there's so much life in the shallows yes. and play in your marriage is a huge part of that. Have you yes. have you watched a playground recently? We have one close to We us. have one close by, uh -huh. and that's, I love it. And I'm here to tell <laughs> you, uh, things on the life on the playground is the same. It is full of kids running around doing crazy things, hardly any of them wearing coats in the rain, mm -hmm. swinging, chasing, playing. They're doing all the same playground things. Mm -hmm. If you watch a playground or you watch puppies or any baby animals, what do we see? There is this deep natural instinct for play. Yep. The playground is named the playground. It's not the productivity ground. It's not the work ground. It's not the math ground nope. or the homework ground. It's the playground and it has so much value. Yeah. Think of all the things that are happening. Now that we're a grown up and mm -hmm. we're thinking back on the playground, all that's going on, our brain and our body and our heart are all aligning together. All the stuff we're learning mm -hmm. is kind of finding its way into life. Mm -hmm. All the social interactions, mm -hmm. all the friend stuff, all the activity, all, we learn a ton without thinking we're learning because mm -hmm. that's what play does. Yep. Learning how to socialize in this non-hostile uh, environment, this holistic learning, there's so much to be gained in play. And it's the part of the day we always look forward oh, to. Oh, yes. Yes. You watch the clock. <laughs> yeah, until recess. Recess is on the schedule. We get to go play. That's and right. And what's so sad is as adults, we often forget how to play. Mm -hmm. I ask so many people, like, what do you do for fun? What do you do for play? Like individually or as couples, what do you do? And a blank look, sometimes a sad look comes over. So let me define play according to Webster's Dictionary. And I'm going to read it off our notes so I get it right. Play is engaging in activity for enjoyment and recreation rather than a serious or practical purpose. Wow. Yeah. That's something we should remember rather than a serious or practical purpose. <laughs> yeah. And we might need to take a moment here just to stop with that and and grieve because a lot of us don't have play in our life. S recess is not scheduled for us as adults. That goes by the wayside and the practical purposes that we need to do to survive, to provide for, to get things done, quickly take precedence. There's a lot of hard things in life that suck fun out of our lives mm -hmm. and out of our marriage, the work of marriage, the work of life sometimes just becomes all that there is. Um, you might be someone that even as an adult, look back and didn't have a lot of play in your childhood because you had to be the responsible one early on. So I wanna take a moment before we get into the lightness of play and the value of play and just say, if you're in that place of not experiencing play in your life and in your marriage or never have, we're sorry, we are sorry but it is never too late. And I want you to hear that with all of the hope that comes with that, that it is never too late. You have not outgrown recess. No. In fact, if I can insert some good news, you're the grown up now. Mm -hmm. No principal, no teacher going to tell you not to go out to recess. You get to schedule it. And so mm -hmm. it is not too late to start doing that. We can Hallelujah. Grow. Hallelujah. <laughs> we can encourage one another in our marriage to insert recess and play again. And the benefits are 
They're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. Couples that play together have a much higher rate of satisfaction and enjoyment in their marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Makes you sense. say it out loud, you just kind of go like, well, duh. Yeah. So let's reinsert recess and play into marriages. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Well, uh, here's some suggestions. First of all, you might need to just schedule it, yes. sit down and talk about it to make a plan. So you mm -hmm. and your spouse sit down and say, what can we do to insert recess back into our mm -hmm. marriage or maybe for the first time? Uh, you shut down screens, you get away from the places of responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you work from home, maybe you need to leave the house. Mm -hmm. Outside, still, a great place is the best place for recess and play. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you just go out there and see what happens mm -hmm. uh, and it will, it will come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Boy, that that's going to, that's going to be a big one. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that you notice with puppies and playgrounds <laughs> is that the kids that take themselves too seriously aren't having fun. Yeah. So don't take yourself too seriously when it comes to recess and play in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And I would also say maybe, uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is just an observation. In almost all kinds of play, there is a little element of danger mm -hmm. and let that be part of it. Maybe you're going to go or some risk or risk. Just maybe a little that's bit of it. risk. I was just thinking of watching these kids swing on the swings and play yeah. around like, they don't know it or yeah. puppies. There's <laughs> always a little bit of risk and danger in the play. That's part of what makes it super fun. Yeah. Bonding. Mm -hmm. So as Brian said, like needing to not take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. So as we look at some examples of how does this actually play out in our marriage, it is really important to not take yourself so seriously, <laughs> like to bring the fun, to be the fun, because you can do fun things. And we talk to people that talk about fun activities and it went horribly because maybe they were at Disneyland and somebody was like judgmental the entire time or high everything. demands and, and, and maybe you've experienced that, like that should have been fun or doing something like a work party that was so fun. And a lot of that comes from just not taking yourself and your life so seriously. So. One of the first things is put your critical nature on timeout. Yep. It has no place in fun. Put those high expectations and demands on timeout. Mm -hmm. And you might need to practice this because sadly that gets uh, that gets in the way and we're really used to bringing that with us wherever we go. Yeah. It might be helpful to remember what you used to do for fun. So think back to when you were a child or when you were in college or early adult, like what did I do for fun then? Did I go rollerblading? Did I bowl? Did I go swimming or play in the water? Or did I do art? Or what are those things that I did for fun? And as a couple, like when you sit down and plan it, like brainstorm, come up with those ideas and maybe see if there's some things from there that you can learn from. If you're struggling, a lot of times just organize sports or games are a good place to start. That's kind of a fun place to play. Mm -hmm. And then make the research fun, the process of figuring this out, the exploring. Well, like, well, let's try that. See if that's fun. Let's let's bring some play into this thing that we're already doing. Um, but ask your friends and family. What do you guys do? Google it, for goodness sakes. Um, <laughs> what like, is fun? Yeah. <laughs> what can I do for play? What do grown-ups do for fun? Mm -hmm. I bet you're going to find the answers. Yep. So we did a previous episode on... What did, what did we title it? Doing like? new things together. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about in that that was really important is the importance of setting aside outcome as the goal. Mm -hmm. So that is so true with play. Uh, <laughs> you cannot be outcome oriented or else it sucks the fun right out of it. It is a process of doing and being. Think of, again, kids on the playground are not there to just see like how many repetitions can I get in on the swing or the merry-go-round by the time, I mean, maybe they're counting, but it's because it's a fun challenge. Yeah. We tend to do that and we make things a workout or we've got another, you know, higher cause reason for play. Yeah. And we need to set all of that aside and just celebrate the process and the trying and make space for maybe one of us that is more confident or one that is more scared or one that it comes more naturally to. Yeah. A lot of grace in that, a lot of just making space for seeing what happens. Yeah, there's it's very likely that one of you in, in the couple is more inclined to have ideas for play 
And that is not an opportunity for those of us who don't feel that way to beat ourselves up mm -hmm. and to feel you know, lesser than and like we're failing. No, it's an opportunity to defer and say, oh, you are really good at coming up with fun, playful ideas, games, outings, activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, but I really want to do that. So you're the play boss. You're going to be the recess in <laughs> charge of recess. he's a great play partner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once I get started, it's great. Uh, <laughs> but it, but that's how it, it needs to happen. Just mm -hmm. let play happen. And we don't mm -hmm. want to suck the fun about it, out of it by just beating ourselves up because we're not naturally good at that. Yeah. It doesn't accomplish anything. The right. goal is to be at the end of it and say, well, what did you accomplish? And, and your answer is, I had fun. I had fun. I had fun. That was the end of it. I don't uh -huh. even know who won or lost or whatever. It was yeah. just lots of fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, it sounds easy. This is one of those little things you that makes think. a big impact. Little things that's a big deal is inserting play and mm -hmm. recess back into your life and marriage. But it may be one of the most challenging yeah. things we bring, we've brought so far in, in these videos for mm -hmm. you to insert. Uh, it's Lean into it. Yeah. Uh, marital joy and play doesn't come, as Elisa said, doesn't come uh, delivered to your door the week after your wedding. Like, yeah. well, now that you're grown up and you're married, here's your scheduled play and fun. No, no we have to do it ourselves. And most mm -hmm. of our life is not set up to uh, make that easy for us. So we want to encourage you to take the challenge mm -hmm. and insert the fun and the play back in it. We're going to spend plenty of time getting into deep issues uh, we've got segments coming up on communication. We've got some weeks we're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about money. We're gonna Those talk, are deep end we're, topics. We're going to be. Uh -huh. We're going to some deep places mm -hmm. in the ocean. But please, to balance that, to to give you the sustaining joy and what it takes to to go there mm -hmm. is spend time in the shallows. Yeah. Get some fun in. Get some play in. That yeah. is so so much a part of the holistic joy yes. of your marriage. Yeah. What you need to go deep uh, is found in time spent playing in the shallows. Yeah. Cuz we've got a God who is playful. We forget we that. We forget that. God created play. <laughs> he clearly is a playful God. So if you've lost sight of that in your marriage, you can pray and trust that God wants this for you. Mm -hmm. He wants to give you ideas. He wants to fill that time. We have a God that wants us to rest in Him and, and be able to enjoy the lightness that He yes. brings. Oh, yeah. What a great truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, and let even let your imagination go on yeah. that, that God is waiting for you on the playground to have fun and to not have a big agenda and yes. trusting that as you play all the all the things that he's teaching you and you're learning mm -hmm. you're trying to sort out they'll find their way there because god sovereignly has invited you and has worked in you and it wants to work in you in that time of play both in your in your life individually and in your marriage yeah. a lot of things can get worked out yep that's good <laughs> that's yes. that, that's, that's found on the playground together yeah. So grab your spouse and watch this video together mm -hmm. so that you can say it is time to play. Mm -hmm. So class adjourn. Class adjourn. It's recess. It's recess. It's recess. Let's go, go play. See you next time. <laughs>